So one way that you can effectively um, uh, manage staff absenteeism is through a absence management policy. So you, you need to have an effective policy in place in order to track, measure, um, and also see how long employees have been out, the reasons they've been out as well. By measuring those, you will be able to see if there is a trend or, or an existing trend. For example, if you have one employee who's always out the week following, a bank holiday or the day after the bank holiday they are never in so you will be able to identify those trends and then through that you will also be able to see whether or not um, there is a need maybe to follow up if there is a need maybe to um, uh, get reports from the doctors to see if um, the employee require, requires any additional support or if it isn't a genuine um, absence, uh, then you can proceed as well, maybe with a disciplinary after uh, following an investigation. So, um, sometimes ab absences don't have to be long-term absences, but you can have the short-term absences, which would be the likes of, you know, I'm calling in sick today, then I'm back in work the next day, I'm off sick again, maybe two days, then I'm back in work again. So these would be your short-term absences. So how do you control those? Um, so when it comes to controlling the short-term absences, uh, within your absence management policy, you should have a method of notification. So you need to uh, state within the policies when employees need to notify you if they're going to be absent. So it could be maybe 30 minutes before the shift. You don't necessarily have to state a time, but you could also say maybe as soon as possible, as soon as the employee knows that they're on a they are, they're unable to attend the workplace, they have to let you know, um, or if they are working from home as well, which has been the case uh, for many um, of the employees, they will have to let you know that um, I won't be able to work today. Um, they should be uh, within the absence management policy you should state as well if the employees are allowed to send for example voicemails are they allowed to send a text message to yourself so is this a method that you allow within the company i would always advise our clients that if you have an employee who is out sick um, in terms of notification always make sure they give you a phone call and the reason i say a phone call is because if i'm genuinely ill i will have no problem calling up to my employer to let them know that unfortunately I am not well today or I sustained an injury and I won't be able to come into work but if it isn't a genuine illness it will be difficult for someone to pick up the phone and give you a call to let you know that they're going to be out sick but on the other hand, if it was a text message, it's so much easier for someone to pick up the phone, type a quick text message to let you know that they're going to be out. So what I would always advise is go for a phone call instead of an email or a voice note or um, a WhatsApp message, for example, or any kind of text message. Um, another thing I would also suggest to have within the absence management policy when it comes to notifications is to say that it has to be yourself unless something happens. So it has to be the actual employee. So if I'm out sick today, I cannot get my friend or a family member to contact unless something has happened where I'm unable to personally contact my employer to let them know that I'm actually going to be out sick. So those are the things that I would highly suggest that you add within the notification. So just to recap, you need, uh, you need to provide a time that they need to contact or at least they need to let you know as soon as possible um, you need to state that either um, text messages are not an acceptable method of communication or notification when it comes to informing your employer that you're going to be absent. And then also that you will need a personal notification from the actual employee who is out sick. The second thing I would advise to add within your absence management policy is that you will be completing return to work interviews. Now, returning to work interviews, they don't have to be um, a 30 minute long a conversation with the employee and you're completing all these forms. It could be a quick 10, 15 minutes chat and it doesn't have to be formal. So it's completely informal. And all you're doing is just to check and see with the employee. They were out sick. Is there a way that you can help them to make 
make sure they're back on track in terms of work. You're also then updating them with anything that has happened in the workplace while they were out sick. Um, another thing as well you can ask is if they're on any medication that could maybe um, um, how can I say it? It would have, it would um, create an issue when they're working. So if they're working with machines and they're taking medication, that will make them a little bit drowsy. So in that case, it will have an it will have an impact on how they're performing. So you want to make yourself aware of that as well. So you can, um, that's something that you can also discuss during the work, return to work interview. And return to work interviews as well are very important, and it also helps to reduce the level of absenteeism as well because if I know that if I'm going to be out sick and it's not a genuine illness I'm going to have to come back in and sit down with my employer and um, have a, a quick conversation in relation to my absence um, in a way I will not want to be doing that each time I'm out sick. So it stops employees from calling in when they're actually not sick and they're just wanting to take a day out. Um, Another thing as well that you can include within the absence management policy are um, are trigger points. So basically what you're doing is you're stating that maybe three days absenteeism, we might have to um, go through investigations and this could lead to a letter of concern. Um, it could be maybe 10 days absence, we're gonna go through an investigation and this could lead to a disciplinary um, depending on what the issue or the situation is as well. And also within the absence management policy, now it would not always apply, but it may apply regarding um, employees who will normally be out sick, but they're not genuinely ill. So they just wanna take a day out here and there and they're calling in sick and it's not genuine. So what you can say is the abuse of the absence management policy, or if you're failing to follow the correct notification procedures, we can this can lead to a disciplinary um, and this, this can lead to dis, a disciplinary or an investigation as well. And also persist, persistent absenteeism can also lead to a disciplinary. So these are the things that you can add into your absence management policy.